Yeah, I'll react to that, sure. Howdy. This freaking lighting. Okay, I'm gonna test something. Deactivate? Activate. Did that help? I, I don't know. Hi guys, uh, preemptive like the Celtic origins of Halloween misunderstood moments Invicta. Good channel. My name's Connor. I like to learn. Let's do it. Uh, our original link to the video, top of the description below that link to the link to the Discord. Blah 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 blah. Hope you're doing well. Let's go. That is very loud for me. The Halloween we celebrate today is filled with iconic traditions of dressing up, trick-or-treating, pumpkin carving, and more. Many around the world welcome it as a recent American export, while those in the US accept it as a time-honored tradition that's been a fabric of our culture for centuries. However, the true origins of Halloween actually date back millennia to the pagan Celtic festival of Soin. Today, let us explore its mysterious history. One of those things that I just don't really question, like the, like the bunny and the and the and the and the eggs for Easter. Like I have no idea what that's about. I just sort of like, eh, yeah. Isn't it like All Hallows Eve? That's all I know. Let's go. As we shall see, the traditions of ancient Halloween had much to do with warding against evil spirits of the night. Our sponsor has a similar objective when it comes to combating the foul demons of the interwebs. Surfshark VPN's got your back sponsor, when it comes to the dangers sponsor, of the sponsor. internet, like server. Guys, make sure to use uh, their uh, .deal slash Invicta. It helps them out. It, they are sponsoring his video. Surveillance, data mining, theft, and locked content. In addition to top-of-the-line industry offerings, Surfshark VPN's awesome features also include MultiHop, which lets you connect using two different servers for increased security, Whitelister, which allows apps or sites of your choosing to bypass the VPN for things like banking, Clean Web, which blocks malware, trackers, phishing, and ads. Kill Switch, which protects against accidental exposure if the server connection gets interrupted. And No Borders Mode, which maximizes your access in the most restrictive of regions. In addition, Surfshark VPN has very generous user terms with unlimited devices, 24-7 customer support, and a 30-day money-back guarantee. Try it today by clicking the link in the description below and using the promo code INVICTA to get 83% off plus 3 extra months for free. Okay. So who were the Celts anyways? Their history is quite enigmatic and dates back to the poorly documented period of the Bronze Age. More specifically, scholars trace their roots to the Central European tribes of the 8th century BC, which developed a somewhat unified language and Hallstatt culture. Over the years, their influence slowly radiated outwards and was succeeded by the Latian culture, which reached as far as the British Isles, Spain, and Turkey. It is this group that would eventually be transformed into what historians now refer to as the Celts. They were never a monolithic entity, but rather a broad, multi-ethnic group of people with similar language, traditions, and religious beliefs. Even the so the Celt is like the, the most broad term. So are Gaul, so Gauls, Gaulish people are Celts because isn't Gaul France? So, this apparent similarity, though, only exists really at the highest levels. With like all the terms like Visigoths and Ostrogoths and Gauls and a million other ones, they're, they're all kind of under the Celtic tree. I, I don't, I'm, I'm asking, I'm not trying to state a fact. Many, Sorry. Even this apparent similarity, though, only exists really at the highest levels, with many more differences emerging upon closer inspection. This has led some in academia to even question the validity of placing such a wide group under a single banner. For the purposes of this video, though, the term Celtic will suffice to describe the general festival traditions practiced by many related groups. So what about the origins of Halloween? Well, it all started off as an ancient Celtic fall festival. Their year was divided into two halves, one light and one dark. Within this cycle would be many important dates. Four marked the equinoxes and solstices, while another four marked the transition between seasons. Each of these important pillars of the calendar was celebrated by a fire festival. 
Ancient Soen, or Proto-Halloween, took place the night of October 31st and commemorated the advent of winter. It was also the start of a new year when one would bring in the last of the harvest and the cattle. Its counterpart was the May Festival of Beltin, which heralded the approach of summer. We aren't exactly sure when these festivals really came into being, as the Celts only kept an oral history. Therefore, much of their past remains a mystery outside of what gets recorded by the Greeks or Romans and what we can reconstruct from archaeology. The first official record of the Festival of Soen appears on a bronze calendar discovered in the former lands of Gaul and dating back to year 1 AD. However, we have to assume that the actual holiday had started centuries earlier. In fact, investigations of the Mount of Hostages in Ireland seem to indicate that the roots of the festival went back even further based on a 5,000-year-old entrance that would have precisely faced the sun as it rose on the morning of Soen. So far we've covered how this proto-Halloween was associated with the fall, which is certainly a key aspect of the modern holiday. However, we are missing another important ingredient, the spookiness. This comes into play. Well, like, you know, fall kind of is like, kind of like death. Because, you know, everything dies. That was a dumb statement, but I, I, I mean it. I, you know what I mean? Jesus with the ancient Celtic belief that the material and spiritual worlds were only separated by a slender veil. They also believed that this veil could be thinned and even lifted in certain places or at certain times. The festival of Soen was one such example. On this date, the Pleiades star cluster rose to its height at midnight, coinciding with the arrival of supernatural beings who would wander into the material realm once the sun had set. During this time, the living could also enter their world as well. Doing so, however, was fraught with danger, as one might become lost and never find their way back. In Celtic mythology, it was thought that during this time, fairies would also travel between their summer hillocks and winter barrows. During this transit, they would bring- Reminds the me of Avatar, The Last Airbender. The... My brain is on half when the spirit, not probably not enough people know it to make the spirit realm part- uh... And never find their way back. In Celtic mythology, it was thought that during this time, fairies would also travel between their summer hillocks and winter barrows. During this transit, they would bring with them the people who had been captured throughout the year. The magical period of Samhain therefore presented the opportunity to intercept these individuals before they passed onto the other world. Folklore is filled with such stories. The Scottish legend of Temlin, for instance, tells of how a young maiden rescued her lover from the fairy queen on Samhain. Other beings like malevolent spirits and ancestral ghosts also filled the night, further adding to its spooky nature. Thus, we can start to see how the early ideas about Halloween start to take form. Let's now look more specifically at the Celtic traditions that became associated with the holiday. As we've stated, Samhain held great seasonal and religious significance. From the standpoint of the seasons, it was a time to start preparing for winter. The surplus crops would have been harvested and were used to make mead and beer. These wouldn't have lasted long before the advent of refrigeration, and would thus be consumed in vast quantities leading up to and especially during the festival. In addition, a portion of the animals which had been brought in from the pastures would be culled and sacrificed, or processed into all kinds of foods. This gave rise to the tradition of hosting giant feasts on the day of Samhain to celebrate the start of a new year. Part of these feasts would be set aside for the spirit ancestors who were soon to arrive, and who would be granted an honorary place at the table. They did. These social gatherings also served as a vessel for matchmaking. For instance, it was customary to bake fruit loaves with mock rings and hazelnuts inside. Those whose slice contained a ring would soon marry, while those who discovered a nut would remain single. Another tradition was for maidens I'm just and imagining so many comedic scenarios around that. Okay. Marry, while those who discovered a nut would remain Like you, you made a trick to like get the girl you wanted to like pick the right slice or or my misunderstanding no. remain single. Another tradition was for maidens and bachelors, while those who discovered a nut would remain single. Uh. Another tradition was for maidens and bachelors to carve their initials on hazelnuts. These would then be tossed into a fire. The intense heat caused them to pop. As they did so and landed next to one another, couples would be romantically paired off. We see this practice mentioned most prominently in the 14th century writings of the Welsh poets and bards. Initialized hazelnuts could not only predict one's love life, but also one's fate. For instance, people would commonly sign them the evening of Soin and check on them in the morning. If they had mysteriously disappeared, it meant that that person would not live through the following year. 
<laughs> I'm just thinking of so many scenarios. Oh, they die. What if, like, you have, like, two pre-popped uh, hazelnuts that you have in your pocket with, like, the person you want to marry or, like, you write their initials on it and your initials? Or no, after they were popped, the initial wouldn't be there anyway. That's even easier. You just, like, have two hazel popped hazelnuts and just, like, throw them on the ground <laughs> right next to each other. <laughs> Check on them in the morning. If they had mysterious people would commonly assign them the evil one's love life, but also one's fate. For instance, people would commonly assign them the evening of so in and check on them in the morning. If they had mysteriously disappeared, it meant that that person would not live through the following year. The reason for all of this hazelnut obsession is because the hazel tree bore religion. That's <laughs> the thing about when you know religion is much more of a thing back then is. There are so many ways to to mess with people. It's insane. Just ignore. You're gonna die. Where's your nut? The reason for all of this hazelnut obsession is because the hazel tree bore religious significance and was closely associated with the other world. It was particularly sacred in Irish and Scottish mythology, where it was said nine magical hazel trees hung over the sacred well of wisdom. Apples were also considered to have magical hazel and trees is that hung over a the snake, sacred well of wisdom. Apples were also considered to have magical, prophetic properties. For instance, apples peeled in a continuous strand predicted longevity. For unmarried maidens, an apple peel tossed over the shoulder would land in the shape of the first initial of her future husband. Eating an apple in the mirror while combing hair will conjure an image of their future spouse. Therefore, one can imagine that love was in the air around the fall festival when all manner of fertility rituals were common. It's no surprise then that so in was considered the most auspicious time for a woman to conceive a child. Let's now pivot to talk more specifically about the religious aspects of the holiday. As such, we'll have to start with the Druids, who were the leaders of Celtic spiritual and scholarly life. One of their primary roles was- Well, if you did conceive around Halloween, November, December, January, February, March, April, May, June, July. Actually, never mind. I was going to say it would be a good time because then the child would be born like in the spring and you might have a lot of crops or I, I don't know. I was performing the rites of Sawin by lighting great sacred bonfires. It appears that these were in part meant to ward off evil spirits. This was done through animal sacrifice and the placement of ancestral skulls around the pit for protection against the dead. In Ireland, the first of these great fires would be lit by the royal court of Tara, who assembled annually to conduct this holy duty. Shortly thereafter, fires would be lit across the lands. Families would then celebrate by dancing through the night and bringing back an ember from the bonfire to light their own hearth and ward off evil spirits. The fear of evil spirits also prompted other customs, which we know and love from our modern Halloween. For instance, Celts apparently took to wearing masks and costumes. I want to know when trick or treat became a thing. So I love from our modern Halloween. For instance, Celts apparently took to wearing masks and costumes so as to trick the denizens of the night that emerged on so in. Thus disguised, people could move freely without risk of interference by the spirits. In the event that you did, however, run into an evil spirit, it would be possible to bribe them with treats carried in one's pocket. Trick or, or treat trick? thus also emerged oh, from an so you trick them or you treat them to treats. Attempt by the Celts to protect themselves from the supernatural. Trick or treat thus also emerged from an attempt by the Celts to protect themselves from Trick the supernatural. Treat. Apparently, it started as a tradition where people would collect eggs, apples, and nuts from their neighbors in the community. Those who gave generously would receive luck and ensure the protection of their crops and livestock for the coming years. Those who made poor offerings, though, would instead be the butt of malevolent tricks and pranks. Over the years, these so-in traditions would continue to evolve as the Celts- You guys- I know it's in hindsight, but I mean, people still be believe a lot of stuff. I don't want to insult anyone. Believe what you want to believe, okay? I, if you want to believe in ghosts, go right ahead. I don't care. Go ahead. Or if you want to believe in astrology, like that affects you, or you want to believe a fortune cookie, like that's going to have an effect. In a way, it can have a positive effect because you thinking it is going to get you in a good mood or a bad mood, depending on the message, and then that'll affect your actions. But... It is so fascinating to me how how people can give in to that. I am I do not like sugarcoating. Do you know what that is that a only an American phrase? 
I don't I don't know if it is or not. I I, I hate like just give me the deal. Don't like for instance, for instance, the other day. Okay, the the other day, okay, this is a great for instance. This this is an exercise ball, right? Just one of those blue balls, you know. Um this was on the floor, right? And it was just like doing a this was at night. This was at like one in the morning or something. And uh it, it the ball was just all of a sudden started strangely just like moving like this. Like not crazy movement, but just like like going like like this, right? And I'm thinking, huh, that that's weird. I'm laying on my bed. And I'm th then I look up and I notice you know there's an air vent right up here, and that must be blowing onto the ground, and then kind of making the ball swivel a little bit, and the ball isn't perfectly spherical or weighted, and so it wants to go back to where it originally was, and so that probably is why it it kept doing that. But then I got up just to like see if my theory was correct, and the air vent wasn't on. There was no air blowing. And then I'm thinking, well, then the other one, there, I had another air conditioner fan out the window blowing, and maybe that's the cause. And so I turned off, I like covered myself, but it just kept spinning. And so then I'm thinking, all right, it, it has to be just on a perfect edge, and it just wants to go back to the middle. And it just, it kept kind of doing it. And I had no explanation. I'm like, I have no idea why that ball is doing that. And there were so many instances, like not once was I like, Oh my God, that's a ghost. You know, I'm like one in the morning. I'm like on the ground, like looking at, at this, the exercise ball I'm now sitting on, just making the movement and trying to figure out what's causing it. And I kept moving it and I couldn't replicate it. But I, I still cannot, will never be like, oh my God, that's a, that's a ghost. And I feel like so many people in that situation would have reached the possible conclusion of a ghost far before even when i did all like my tests and it's just so crazy how how people can give in to things that just make no sense and that can be easily disproven like there there was never a time where like the marriage was awful like wait i thought our hazelnuts landed together or some it blows my mind i anyways it's interacted with new cultures for instance, when the Romans took over much of their lands, the fall festival would merge with Rome's own harvest tradition involving Pomona, the goddess of fruitful abundance. Later, as the Catholic Church spread throughout the lands, it attempted to co-opt existing pagan festivals. For example, in the 7th century AD, the holiday of All Saints Day, also known as All Hallows Day or Hallow Mass, was created. While originally scheduled in May, it was later moved by Pope Gregory III to occur on the same day as Sowin. This late October festival retained much of its former traditions, but with an emphasis now on a vigil for the saints and martyrs, rather than ancestors and evil spirits. It would continue to evolve, however, over the centuries, and eventually made it to the New World when Europeans brought over their cultural baggage. However, the influence of the Hollow Mass was never that significant, given that most early immigrants, at least to the <gasps> British colonies, were non-Catholics. Rhode Island. Anglican. Con Congregational Lutheran Presbyterian. I always forget. Yep. Though, of course, harvest festivals remain quite popular. This would change, though, during the potato famine of 1850, when over a million Irish people immigrated to America. They renewed the traditions of the Celtic Harvest Festival and further adapted it to fit the new world. For example, the tradition of carving jack o' lanterns is an Irish one. It started from an old legend of a man named Stringy Jack. He had apparently managed to repeatedly trap the devil, each time freeing him on condition that Jack's soul would not go to hell. With every new deal struck, the duration of the agreement was extended. Eventually Jack died- See, never questioned it until this moment, why it's called a jack-o'-lantern. I don't know, it's, it's a jack-o'-lantern, I don't know. Well, under every new deal struck, the duration of the agreement was extended. Eventually Jack died while under these terms, but was denied entry into heaven for his sinful life. However, when he descended to hell, the devil too denied him entry on accord of their agreement. But the devil was still vengeful and cursed Jack to forever wander the dark lands of the earth with nothing but a burning coal to light his way. The damned man placed the ember into a hollowed out turnip, Dwight Schrute, oh. which earned him the name Jack of the Lantern, or simply placed the ember earth 
with me. So we should have been carving turnips this whole time? I'm going to carve a turnip. And when someone says, why isn't it a pumpkin? I'm like, I'm going to be like, why is, isn't yours a turnip? Nothing but a burning coal to light his way. The damned man placed the ember into a hollowed out turnip, which earned him the name Jack of the Lantern, or simply Jack Lantern. It was an Irish tradition to honor this legend ah. by carving out turnips and placing candles in them. Jeez, good job. That one is nightmare fuel. Good job on that. That's cute. However, when they came to America, they found that the native pumpkins were far more suited for the task, which is what has given rise to our own modern tradition. Interesting. I hope that as you celebrate your Halloween, you appreciate the rich history of its Celtic, Roman, and Christian past. It will also be important to remember that traditions are always evolving, and whatever festivities you, your family, your friends, and your neighbors choose to do will play a part in shaping its future. A huge thanks is- I guess I just assumed it was a holiday created by candy companies or something. I don't know. That's really cool, though. Um, that was much more interesting than I expected, to be honest. I didn't expect to learn so much about Halloween, but I did. Awesome video from Invicta. Hope you're all doing well. Love you guys. Shin up if you're not well. Look at me. You'll be good soon. Don't worry. You'll be fine. Bye.